Okay, welcome back. So this is our final segment and our final lecture on the fast Fourier transform. And we're going to continue looking at image compression. So last time we showed how you can load an image, fast Fourier transform it. Most of the coefficients are small, so you can zero them out, only store the big coefficients. And then when you inverse fast Fourier transform, you get a really good reproduction of your original image. Okay, so this is the basis for image compression. This is a really important concept. And we're going to try a few more image examples and see how it works and try to get a feeling for why it works. Okay, so let's go up here. Um, I have some other images in my folder instead of, I'll just run this one again. So we have this image of, um, of a person and when we Fourier transform and threshold, we get these different approximations for different amounts of compression. So we're only keeping 8% of the Fourier basis in the upper right plot, almost identical to the original image. In the lower left plot, we're actually throwing away 99% of the Fourier coefficient. So this is a factor of 100 times compression. And we get a really good image. But if we're too aggressive and we throw away too many coefficients, in the lower right-hand corner, you see that you actually start to really degrade the image. Okay, and it turns out that there's kind of a sharp threshold sometimes where you get big degradations. Okay, good. <clears throat> Let's try the same thing, but for a different example. So now we're going to run um, this on, um, let's try to run this on the dog cat example. So dog cat, uh, this is also a JPEG. So I think I can just run this all the way through. Good, dog cat. And I'll go back and show you. Um, now notice that if my image is a wide rectangle, then my array of Fourier coefficients is going to be a wide rectangle. This is always exactly the same size as my original data. So if I have n by m pixels, I'm going to have n by m Fourier coefficients. This is just always true. Okay. And for this dog cat example, this is a cute image of a dog and a cat um, touching noses with grass in the background. And notice that when I look at the Fourier transformed version of these, there's a few things um, that we see right off the bat. So um, first of all, with the same threshold values, I didn't change the threshold command at all, I'm actually keeping way more percentage of the FFT basis than in the Afghan picture example. So one of the reasons this, this could be, um, well, I want you to think about why this could be. So the image resolution on this is actually quite different um, than in the other example. So let's just look at what the size of um, let's look at what the size of these this image is. So size of A. Okay, so this is a much smaller image. This is a 437 by 660 pixel image. The other one was well over a thousand. And so one of the things we notice is that images that are smaller tend to have less, uh, they're less compressible. There's less things you can throw away. If I only had a 20 by 20 image and I Fourier transform it, I'd really need all of that information to get the, the image back. So bigger, higher resolution images tend to be more compressible. I can throw away more Fourier coefficients and still get a good approximation. Something else you notice here is that this is actually a notoriously difficult example for image compression because it has these textured features like grass and fur and whiskers. Okay, so grass and fur and hair are extremely difficult things to compress. Um, and so you'll notice that even keeping 1.6% of my FFT basis, I still have really degraded, I have a really degraded image, right? I'm not getting the fur or the grass texture very well. Um, this has actually been a pretty interesting problem in, um, in Hollywood, in, in the movie industry. So Pixar, in their early movies like Toy Story, they had plastic textures, right? They had toys as the actors because, you know, shiny plastic surfaces are easy to render, easy to get them to look right. And it took them many years and many generations to actually get accurate 
rendering of hair and fur so that they could have monsters and stuffed animals and things like that. So fur and hair have been a notoriously difficult thing for, um, you know, for graphical modeling and rendering. And it's really because they have a lot of structure. They're not as sparse as something like a smooth plastic or, a, you know, the back of a, a laptop or something like that. Okay, so kind of an interesting, interesting aside. Um, okay, now the last thing I want to show you, um, something I think is really interesting, is to try to understand why this image compression is working the way it does. So I'm going to go back to this Afghan example, Afghan 3, and just make sure it still runs. Okay, everything loads and runs just fine. So I want to start thinking about why it is that I'm able to compress this image. I already gave you some explanation, but I want to give you a different explanation. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to uh, essentially plot image as a mountainous surface, mountain surface. I'll show you what that means. Okay, so I'm going to make a new figure and I'm going to make a surface plot. So I'm going to make a new equals uh, image resize of my full image, a black, white, two, and I'm going to downsample it by a factor of 10. So I'm going to resize it so it's 10% as large. And I'm going to make a surface plot of this new matrix. Okay, so I just did that really quickly. I'm taking my full image, my A black, white, two. This is not compressed. I am going to resize it. I'm going to downsample it by a factor of 10. And I'm going to plot that as a surface. So let's try this. Let's just run this. Okay, so this last image is the one I want. That's my surface. Okay, I'm going to make it big so I can play around with this a little bit. Okay, looks weird. What did I just plot? Well, if you rotate this, you'll see that what I did was I actually took every pixel value in my image and I'm taking the pixel value, the intensity of the eyes and the valleys of the dark hair and things like that, and I'm making those heights on this surface plot. So I'm plotting the surface of the pixel intensity of every pixel in this image. Okay, so you see the image and you see that you can represent it as the surface. That's pretty cool. And what's interesting is, now this is the interpretation of the Fourier coefficients that I really want to kind of impress on you, is that this mountainous surface, you can think of, um, imagine that there were four people holding a tight bed sheet. Okay, so we're all holding a bed sheet tight on four ends. And I start whipping my bed sheet at one frequency, okay? And I create this standing sine wave in the x direction. And the other two people start whipping theirs at a different frequency and they start, uh, you know, making a standing sine wave in the y direction. And we keep doing it at those fixed frequencies and we get this standing wave pattern on the bed sheet. That is one Fourier coefficient in my two by two, my, my, my two dimensional matrix of Fourier coefficients. And so what you can start thinking is, how many different sinusoidal bed sheet patterns do I need to add up to make this mountainous image? Okay, so you can think of this really complex terrain as being the sum of these different frequency sine waves. And chances are I don't actually have to add up that many of those sine waves to get this image. So, you know, I only need a few of those large Fourier coefficients that really contribute to the big features in this image. Okay, and that's really what image compression is doing. It's kind of remarkable. Um, we can even take this and make another figure, um, copy, and I'm going to take my filtered figure. So a filt. Um, let's hope this works. I think it should. Why not? Okay, it all runs through. And we have these two images now. So on the right, this is my filtered, uh, my filtered image. And on the left, that's my original image. And if I rotate this down to the same perspective, you see that, yes, in fact, this is the same image. And that's my mountainous landscape. And if I go here to the right and I rotate it down, you see that I'm also getting the same, uh, the same image. But if I change my perspective a little bit, you'll notice that the mountain peaks are maybe a little bit less sharp. 
Maybe there's a little bit less texture, but basically we're capturing the same shape underly underlying the large features like cheeks and hair and hood and things like that. Okay, so with only a few of these sum of sine waves, these spatial sine waves, you can get a really good reproduction of the pixel values in your full image. And that's just kind of how I think about image compression. Okay, thank you very much. Um, all right, great.